Let us pray. <laughs> Jesus, help. Amen. All right. So Romans 6, verse 7 and 8 is where we stopped last time. It says, for one who has died has been set free from sin. Say set free from sin. These need to be like ingrained. I'm set free from sin. I'm dead to sin. No longer enslaved to sin. Sin will have no dominion over me. I've turned these into declarations. You know what I mean? This is who I am. Set free from sin. Who are you, Caleb? Set free from sin. You know? <laughs> Caleb, describe yourself in one sentence. Set free from sin. That's who I am. Okay? So, one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him. So, I'm just doing a little bit of review because I know it's not, we're not teaching like Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday. We have other things going on. But you remember that there was a son of the slave woman and the son of the free woman. And you remember how Romans 6, 8 talks about how we are, if we are dead with him, we're also alive with him, right? And that the parallel there is that Ishmael, the son of Hagar, was cast out, that the, the slave mother and the son were cast out so that they would not inherit with the son of the free woman. And that's how drastic a line in the sand this thing is. This situation you're in is that drastic, it says, now we are like ha-ha children of promise. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. We like Isaac, which is literally translated in Hebrew. I'm not kidding. Ha-ha. That was the original. Like, it would be like you naming your kid Giggle. <laughs> what's your son's name? Giggle. Uh, no, what's, that's his nickname. No, that's his name. Giggle. That's what, I, like, we think Isaac, you know, oh, Isaac, what a, a cool name. No, it was like you named your kid Ha-ha. What? You know, there's actually a football player called Ha Ha Clinton Dix. His first name's Ha Ha. I love it. Just taking it back to the roots of the Bible. The ha Ha. All right. So we are not children of the slave woman because we died with him. We are children of the free woman because we're alive with him. That's the juxtaposition that we talked through on that verse. Okay. Are you with me? Okay. Because of that, verse 9 makes sense. We know that Christ... Being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. Say once for all. Once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also, verse 11, must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The same parallel. It's saying, this is why you must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Because we know that Christ died once. That he, be, having died, will never die again. Right? Death no longer has dominion over him. I want you to think about that word dominion. What does that mean? Somebody give me a definition. Control. Control. Okay, that's good. What? Power, Power over in, like in, in slavery. Yeah. Mastery. Or Mastery. Ownership, death no longer owns him. Death no longer controls him. Death no longer, he no longer submits to death as he did at one time. You remember he said that the uh, ruler of this age is coming for me, but I, or the, yeah, he says the prince of this age is coming for me through my betrayer, but I, he has nothing on me. I give up my life willingly, right? He said, I gave up my life willingly. He doesn't take it from me. I give up my life willingly. But that still is a submission to death. It's, I'm accepting the dominion of death. Think about this. You can't gloss over stuff like that. God accepted the consequence of the fall. He submitted to the consequence of the fall. God became man to submit to the death that came through Adam. This is a big deal. <laughs> God, who's eternal, the eternal one, the uncreated one, no, no, like, shelf life, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, please use by date, like, no expiration date, submitted to death, submitted to an end point. The unending one said, I will end for you. The one who has no beginning or end said, I will end for you, Melissa. I will accept an end point for you. What is death other than an end point? And we know that he raised. 
And we know that he, he's alive forevermore. But there is the, you need to get the reality that God actually submitted to death. God literally said yes to the death. <laughs> so that you could say yes to the dress. <laughs> he said yes to death so you could say yes to the dress. All right? You got you to gotta get there. God, the unending one, decided to end. Why? Why? So that you also can consider yourself. God submitted to death so that you can have a different way of thinking. What? God said, I'm going to die so that they can change their minds. Your mindset is worthy of his death. The way you think is so valuable to him that he submitted to death just to change it. I think we should pay attention to the way we think about things. If he puts the life of himself as a value measurement for the thoughts in your head, maybe you should take captive every thought and make it submissive to Christ Jesus. Maybe you should really take captive every thought. Did it say the bad thoughts? Do you know that verse? Take captive every thought. It doesn't say the temptation thoughts, the bad thoughts, the good. It says every thought. You need to check every thought at the door. Is that God? Is that me? It actually says take captive every thought. What do you do with a captive? You hold it. Like you have, okay, consider wartime. What do we do with war captives? You question it. You take it. You hold it. You question it. You might torture it. Oh, just depending on where you're from, right? <laughs> we in the United States does not agree with torture. But we have an army man here in his, <laughs> his uniform. No. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, I'm reading the book. <laughs> yeah. No. Here's what you do. You say, where did you come from? Hold on. Before you get to come in here, who sent you? Do you have any friends? Where were you camped before this? What do you intend to do once you get in there? You're interrogating every thought and saying, is this Christ or Antichrist thinking? Because he submitted to death just to change your ever-loving mind. I mean, that is wild to me. That is wild talk. It's coming out of my mouth, and it's hard for me to even, what? That's wild. The unending God decided to end so that I could have a different thought. That's what repentance means, right? To change the way you think. Man, God puts a value on your brain. Wow. Wow. And it says you also must. I mean, there's some, there's some really heavy language. You also must. You also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. You must. You must. It's a command. You must. Thou shalt do it. So if you are still, if you're saying I'm a sinner, I'm going to sin every day, you are straight up in disobedience in your thinking. You're disobeying with your thinking before your actions even catch up. You're disobeying with the... With the thoughts that God died for, you're using the thing that God died for to disobey him. I don't think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you might need to take a little hee-hee pill for right now. <laughs> a ho-ho pill, you know what I mean? You might need it just to give it a little Holy Ghost anesthesia. It helps some medicine go down. Oh. So let me back up to verse 10. And this is something I really want you to memorize, uh, these verses. I really want you to memorize. You need to get into Romans 6 until you don't, you don't even know how to live without talking about it, okay? You need to. I mean, I, I don't have the whole thing memorized, but I can, I can almost say the first 12 verses by heart every time without skipping a beat in my ESV Bible. I don't care what uh, translation you have. You need to know this stuff. This is an exposition on what happened to you at the cross. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. Now, man, one who has died has been set free from sin. 
Now, if we believe that we have died with him, we also believe that we will live with him. I'm telling you, it needs to be in there. It needs to be in there. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. Why am I memorizing that? So I can show off to you, I'm talking to myself constantly. <laughs> I'm telling myself the truth. I, this is my self-talk. It's not, okay, you, you, you can do it. You can do it. That's not my self-talk. You know what I mean? That's good. Here's what's better. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. So I also must consider myself dead to sin and alive to God forevermore. That's my self-talk. It's got to be in there. It's got to be in there. Okay? So verse 10 is a great one to memorize. For the death he died, he died to sin. Let's say it together. For the death he died, he died to sin. Let's say it again. For the death he died, he died to sin. One more time. For the death he died, he died to sin. Once for all. Say once for all. Once for all. I'm going to brainwash you by the end of this. Don't worry. But the life he lives, he lives to God. And we're going to wash your brain nice and clean. The life he lives, he lives to God. So you also, so you also, so you also must, so you also must consider, so you also must consider yourself. So you also must consider yourself dead to sin and alive to God. You need to start practicing. You need to start washing your brain. <laughs> Brainwash yourself. Yeah. If it's the truth, it's just going to be clean at the end. Right. Like we say all the time around here, if it's the truth, it will set you free. Yeah, right. If you end up less free, it wasn't the truth. <laughs> I don't care who says it. Yep. I don't care if Bill Johnson, Benny Hinn, Saddam Hussein, I don't care who says it. <laughs> if it's not the truth, <laughs> it won't set you free. Yeah. But if it is the truth, yes. it will set you free. <laughs> I just believe it. I'm a believer. <laughs>